Assalamu alaikum. Today we are coming to give the first lecture for the Alwafa infection control group of WhatsApp. These lectures will be benefit for the people who are busy and they cannot attend the lecture in the auditorium and it will be also the basic knowledge that you can open at any time and listen to these uh, lectures. So it will help you to know what is going on. Today we are going to talk about the orientation of the infection control. This is the basic orientation for the infection control for all stuff. What is infection? Infection is an invasion of the body by pathogens or microorganisms capable to invade and multiply on the tissue and create infection. Okay, the standardized classification of infection. You have community acquired infection and you have hostile acquired infection. Community acquired infection and infection is present at the time of admission to the hostel uh, or incubating period at this time. But the hostile acquired infection that is infection that manifests within the first 48 hours of medical treatment are considered to be a nosocomial infection. For example, if I got one patient coming to female ER or male ER, this in al Wafa hospital and the patient coming complaining of the fever, uh, sore throat, this is the infection, this is community infection. But if the patient coming with the, for example, patient coming for uh, DR, she is antenatal, she's coming for labor, then after admission, after her labor, she got bronchitis, pneumonia, gastroenteritis. This is nosocomial infection because uh, this is coming within first 48 hours after admission. So we have to differentiate between community infection and the hostile acquired infection. The chain of infection started with the infectious agent. It will be present in the reservoir and it will go out by the exit of portal to transmit by the mode of transmission. So the mode of transmission may be droplets, may be airborne, may be vector, may be vehicle. So the transmission will be through these modes. It will enter to the susceptible host. So you have to break this chain so your patients will not get any disease. How do we prevent transmission of microorganisms? You have to break the chain. Okay, the chain you see it is started with the infectious agent. It will be bacteria, fungal, viruses, or protozoa. Okay, it will go to the reservoir, maybe people, equipment, or water. And there is a portal of exit, excretions or secretions, droplet. It will be through the respiratory tract infection, gastrointestinal uh, tract, broken skin, or mucous membrane. So means of transmission, this one, at this point, you can break the chain. How you will break the chain? You have to follow the standard precaution. Standard precaution, hand hygiene, BBE, this one breaking the chain of infection. You have to receive vaccination. So you have any blood diseases and you receive the vaccine, for example, for hepatitis B. So you will break the chain. So you will be safe at this time. Sterilization also of the instrument. This is very important. So it will break the chain, not any transmission to the uh, patients. The first step in the control of communicable disease is early detection. Standard precaution can apply for every patient regardless of their diagnosis and infectious agent. We can say by Arabic or by English, by Arabic it is احتياطات قياسية. دي الاحتياطات الأساسية اللي بتتعامل بيها مع المريض. الاحتياطات دي بستخدمها مع كل أنواع المرضى اللي بيدخلوا المستشفى. سواء المريض ده infectious, سواء ده or non-infectious. I don't know. I will receive many patients entering to the hostel. So I have to I have to deal with them with the standard precaution, regard, regardless their infectious status, they are infected or non-infected. So this one will be applied for all patients, regardless of their diagnosis or infectious status. هذه هي الاحتياطات التي تستخدم مع جميع الحالات التي تدخل المستشفى سواء حالات معدية أو غير معدية. Standard precaution will start with the hand hygiene. This is the steps or the uh, lines of the standard precaution. دي الأساسيات بتاعت الاحتياطات القياسية. 
اول حاجه هي تعقيم الايدي او نظافه الايدي نمبر 2 بيرسونال بروتكتيف اكويبمنت هاندلينج اوف ديسبوزابل اوف كونتامينيتد ايتمز شارب نيدل لينن ميديكال ويست بيشنت كير اكويبمنت لابوراتوري سبيسمن cleaning of the room patient placement so you have to separate the patient isolate the infected cases this is from the uh, the component of the standard precaution and the final is cuff etiquette so how we will carry out the hand hygiene how I am a nurse I'm a doctor I'm a technician I'm housekeeping how I will carry out this hand hygiene You see your hand. If you are going to give the medicine to the patient without your hand hygiene, you are giving to disease for him. You are not helping for cure, but you are creating problem. So the hand hygiene, routine hand washing, 40 seconds to 60 seconds. It will take time. Surgical hand rub. This is in the OT theater. Two minutes to six minutes. Use of alcohol rub from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. Antiseptic hand wash from one minute to two minutes. The last visit of MOH before Ramadan, they are asking some stuff to make alcohol rub. Use the alcohol rub, use the alcohol gel. Our stuff, they are not following the right sequence of the alcohol rub. So we need everybody to train about how to do the alcohol rub. When I will do this one? When I will do the uh, hand hygiene? Number one, before touching the patient, you have to do, to have to go and do hand hygiene. Number two, before cleaning or aseptic procedure. Number three, after body and body fluids exposure. Number four, after touching the patient. Number five, after touching the patient surrounding. This is when I will do the hand hygiene. This is uh, WHO May 5. Key moments. This is the five moments for hand hygiene. If I can ask you when you will do hand hygiene, your immediate answer: This is the five moments of hand hygiene according to the WHO, World Health Organization. Before touching patient, before clean and uh, procedure or aseptic procedure, after touching the body fluids, after touching the patient, and after touching the patient surrounding. This is when it will be. Okay, this is the right sequence of the hand hygiene. First one, you have to take the alcohol gel. Then you have to make a uh, rub. This is you, by your hand. Then back to back rub. You see the correct sequence. Number five, rub the back of the right fingers with the left bulb. Number six, rub the back of your right hand with the left thumb. And number seven, rub your right palm with the left hand fingers, moving in a circular way fo uh, forward. Then your hand will be clean. You have to consume 20 seconds to 30 seconds. Not accepted to do alcohol in your hand and do any rub. You have to follow the right sequence of hand hygiene, hand rub. لجميع العاملين في المستشفيات. المفروض ان احنا بنستخدم الهاند راب او الالكهول جيل لما بتكون ايدينا نوت سبويلد يعني ما فيش اي حاجه ظهر عليها if your hand is visibly clean and it is not soiled so you have to take the alcohol hand hygiene rub alcohol rub uh, for example at the beginning of my duty i am coming to do round for the uh, hospital uh, patients i am a doctor i am a I am doing ground for my patients, so I have to do hand washing, then I will take alcohol gel. But in between patient, from one patient to other patient, I can take only the alcohol gel because my hand is visibly clean. If one will ask me if I am using gloves, if you are using gloves with a powder, you have to do hand washing. But if your gloves without powder, so your hand is still visibly clean, so you have to do by taking alcohol gel. You have to make the same sequence. If you are doing The same sequence you will not forget. If MOH coming at any time ask you to do the alcohol rub by this same sequence, you will not forget because, because you are using every day. And it will take time from 10, uh, 20 seconds to 30 seconds. But the hand washing will take from 40 seconds to 60 seconds. 
so don't forget the time because you are observing also the time you are using when you are doing al uh, hand washing or alcohol hand rub. Personal protective equipment. Sequence of donning of personal protective equipment. Don't forget the steps of donning of the personal protective equipment. Gown, you will go up for mask or respirator. You will go up for googles. And the last one is gloves. So don't forget, number one is gowning. Then you will go up mask. Then you will go up googles. Then last one, it will be the gloves. This is how to wear the personal protective equipment. Also, okay. How to safely remove, how I will remove the personal protective equipment. First one, it will be more dirty. It will be the gloves. So I have to remove my gloves. Don't away of the, I take care to spread of, of splashes of the gloves. So you have to remove, your hand will be down and you have to put on the yellow plastic without any splashes will come out. Then you have to remove the gown from inner side to outer side. Don't touch the outside surfaces because it is dirty, it is infected. So you have to remove from inside to outside. Then you have to roll it and put on the yellow plastic. The face shield. You will remove the face shield on the uh, the next the next step is removing of the face shield. When I will remove the mask, it will be out of the room of the patient. I have to remove the mask. Don't touch outside surfaces. You have to remove it from the tie up and you will throw on the yellow plastic. Okay? So, if I will ask you how you will remove the BPE, first dirty is gloves, second is gown, third it will be face shield or eye googles, then the mask will be removed outside of the room. You have to remove and throw on the yellow plastic. You know, during your presence in the patient room, the air is infected, the air is spoiled. So don't remove this respirator. Respirator, suppose it will be out of the patient room. Okay, where to remove? This is also what we are saying. The doorway before leaving the patient room or in the ante room. I will remove all of my PPE before leaving the patient room. Only remove the respirator outside of the patient room. Okay, what about the expand, uh, expanded precautions? We are telling we have a standard precaution and we have transmission-based precaution. The standard precaution will be used for all type of patient, regardless they are infected or non-infected. But the uh, transmission-based precaution, it is extra precaution to be added to the basic precaution, like contact precaution, droplet precaution, airborne precaution. Contact precaution, this one green color, for patient with contact, infect uh, contact infections, like MRSA, skin diseases, you have to use uh, PPE, gloves and gowns, the patient placement, coherating, no need a private room. No, you have to put on private room. You have to put on the single room, isolating room. But coherating, if you have too much patients, if you have two cases of MRSA or gastrointestinal, you can put on the same double room, so no need of negative pressure room, but you can put with the same. Coherating, it means the same disease. The two patients is the same disease. Droplet infection, this is uh, within a three feet distance, red color, it will be red color, that uh, will be outside the room. For patient with droplet infection, like mumps, meningitis, you have to use the mask, surgical mask, not airborne. This is only surgical mask. And gloves and gowns, okay? The patient uh, placement, it will be private room. The airborne, this one spread by through the aerosol, more than three feet distance, blue color for patient with airborne infection, like measles, chicken box, small box, TB, small box and the TB, MRSA, uh, coronavirus, and the patient, uh, we have to use the PPE, N95. You have to make fit test for N95. It will be updated every year. All hospital staff, they have to get the N95 uh, card. This card will write what is the fit for you. We have three types of uh, uh, N95 in our hospital, 1860 and N95 1870 and N95 1805. This 
what we have in our hospital. So you have to make fit test and you have to get a card. We have to check what is fit for you. This is by infection control practitioner in female side. And in male side, Dr. Abdel Latif, he got training about how to do the fit test for the male staff. And he's the one doing this fit test. So you have extra precaution to be used for patients according to the diagnosis. Contact, it is green color, okay? And uh, diseases can be transmitted by contact like scabies, gastro um, gastro uh, intestinal or MRSA or skin diseases, this one transmitted by contact. This one will be on, if cohorting, no need for private room. Cohorting, it means if same diagnosis to patient, but if one patient alone, he has infectious disease contact, he has to be in private room. Droplet infection, this disease is transmitted by droplets. The droplets more than five uh, nucle um, micron, it is more secretions different of airborne and uh, the secretion that's why it will be we have to use the uh, surgical mask the airborne uh, there is also droplets but it's very small less than five micron you have to use the n95 mask uh, during dealing with the patient you have to place the patient in uh, this one uh, what we can say negative pressure room we have in al wafa hospital uh, in female admission negative pressure room in female er negative pressure room but on the male side, the male ER, negative pressure room under construction, still not yet finished. And uh, also we have in ICU, this uh, negative pressure room. We have a monitor outside. We, the staff is monitoring the negative pressure daily and they are recording in the phone. Only once safe injection practice are a set of measures to perform injections in an optimally safe manner for patients, health care providers, and others. Safe injection practice. Vaccination of health care workers. You see the health care workers is happy because he's getting the vaccine. So this is good. So the recommended vaccines for health care workers, suppose we have to receive hepatitis, immunization for hepatitis B, influenza, MMR, varicella, chicken box, Tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, meningococcal, okay? This one supposed to be received, but al Wafa Hostel offered hepatitis B immunization and influenza. Influenza will be taken every year from the vaccination room. And hepatitis B, we have to do the antibodies, so I will check your uh, immunity status. If you are on need for getting this hepatitis B vaccine, we will start your three doses. But if you are immune already, no need for receive any dose. Occupational exposure. Occupational exposure, mm, yani, it means when you will get anything, any problem, where you will go, you will go in Pilwayi Health Clinic. So if I will get needle stick injury, I have to do first aid. Then I have to report the Mbilwayi Health Care Clinic during working hours. For example, if I am out of the working hours, the staff of Mbilwayi Health Clinic, they left already, so I have to go to ER and inform my supervisor. You have to fill up needle stick injury form and you have to fill up the OVR form. So this is the first action for the needle stick injury for the Mbilwayi. Okay, we can say first aid. Wash your hand immediately. If you got any needle break, you have to run to the water. Wash your hand with the soap and water. Clean with the alcohol gel. Okay, you have to do the right sequence for cleaning your hand by alcohol. Don't push the injury side to bleed. No, leave bleeding coming uh, normally. Cover with appropriate bandage. And also the, uh, for the exposure, for body fluids exposure, you have to remove the contaminated clothing. You have to irrigate affected area with a copious amount of water. You know there is irrigation on many places in the hospital. If you will see the irrigation, it is present. We saw uh, in laboratory there is irrigation because we have a lot of dealing with the blood and can be uh, this one exposure to body fluids. So they have already this one uh, irrigation. So they can do irrigation for 10 minutes with the plain water. Okay, this is very important, you have to see. This is uh, uh, what you will do if you will uh, get a needle stick injury. If I am staff, not vaccine, 
I am unvaccinated. What I will do if the patient is positive, you have to take immunoglobin and you have to take start your vaccine. If the patient is negative, initiate, uh, initiate this vaccination, no need of taking immunoglobin. If the patient is unknown, you have to start your vaccine. But my opinion for this one, you have to take also immunoglobin because consider this patient may be positive. So first one, if the employee unvaccinated, I am coming new staff, but I did not receive vaccine. I got needle break from positive case, I have to receive immunoglobin and vaccine. If the patient is negative, serology is negative, initiate only the vaccine. And if the unknown, initiate the vaccine, but we can take also the immunoglobin. If previously vaccinated responder, what's the meaning of responder? My result of antibodies, it will be normal. The normal antibodies will be 10. If you are 11, 14, 50, 100, or 1000, you are responder, but your responder is different according to your body. So I am already received vaccine and I am responder with a no normal level of antibodies. So if the patient is positive, no treatment. If negative, no treatment no treatment, and if a, non if a non patient, no treatment. But if you are uh, receiving vaccine, but not responder, not responder, my antibodies low, lower than 10. If the patient is positive, I have to take two doses of immunoglobin and start revaccination again. If the patient is negative, no treatment. If the patient unknown, start immunoglobin, okay, and because it will be considered as a positive. If known high risk source, treat as source where the, uh, the patient is uh, hepatitis antigen positive. Okay, if your uh, antibodies response unknown, I will ask you, did you receive vaccine? I don't know, I forget. I received one dose, I received two doses. I don't know my situation. So at this time, I have to do a test for you. If you are got needle break from positive case, so I will do test for you. If inadequate, if it is adequate, the antibodies is adequate, so no treatment will be given. I am already safe, so no need to take anything. But if inadequate, start immunoglobin and start vaccine. Okay. If the patient is negative, also I will do treatment. If adequate, no treatment. If inadequate, I will start vaccine. If unknown case, I have to do also the uh, antibodies for the employee health clinic. The employee, sorry, for the employee. If adequate, no treatment. If inadequate, I will take immunoglobin and I will initiate vaccine. So this is your status what you will do don't be on panic if you will got needle stick injury you have to wash your hand and you have to take alcohol gel then you have to inform this infection control practitioner call madam azza 152 tell her i got needle stick injury give me the form and the file number of the patient so I will check the serology of this patient. If the patient is positive, I will check your immunity status. If you are immune already, don't be worried. You are immune and you are responder. You receive vaccine and you are responder. But if you are not immune, you don't know your immunity status, I have to do quickly antibodies for you. So I have to give you antibodies, already antibodies. This is immunoglobin. Immediately within first 12 hours, if your uh, antibodies is low and will start your vaccine. So don't be panic. You have to do the right things. You have to do uh, first uh, in, uh, action. You have to wash your hand, take alcohol gel, then inform infection control practitioner, fill up the form, and at this time we can help you to be safe, inshallah. Type, this is the follow-up. If uh, I got needle stick injury from hepatitis B patient, I have to do baseline uh, antigen. Then I have to do after six months. Okay, what about hepatitis C? Hepatitis C also you have to do the baseline hepatitis C um, antibodies and the liver function test. Then you will do after three months anti hepatitis C virus. Then you will do after six months and you have to do also the liver function test. For AIDS, also the baseline after six weeks you have to do. This is six weeks and you have to do after three months, then you have to do again the anti-virus uh, uh, AIDS, this one after six months. So this is the follow-up of the uh, uh, people exposed to the needle stick uh, with the blood diseases. 
Medical waste, our medical waste management. This is the normal waste, the papers, everything not infected, and uh, it is already available on all departments. Suppose it is uh, stainless steel is working. Suppose there is a logo on the this one's uh, uh, basket. The yellow plastic, the yellow bags, okay, used for dispose of all infectious waste, all microbiological waste, okay. It is heavily soaked with, uh, if the heavily soaked with blood, if your gloves you have to remove in the yellow plastic chemotherapy waste, whatever this is the infectious waste, this is yellow plastic, you have to uh, put on the yellow plastic bag and must be collected by uh, the uh, this uh, housekeeping every day, they will, uh, they have to collect uh, and put on the a point of collection. Then there is somebody trained how to collect all the waste from all hospital. He will take those the waste room. We have already waste room with the temperature is 18. This is according to the MOH instructions. This is sharp container for all the needles or scalpel, syringe, bibits, and the glass items. Suppose it will be three-fourths. Don't put your sticker over the logo. You have to put down of the logo. Must be open from up. You see, this one up. This hole, this hole must be open according to the MOH, but this cover must be tightly closed, and the hole at the top, it will be open. You have to hang up. If it is not hanged, not accepted, don't cover this logo. Logo must be appear. If it is three fourths, reach to the three fourths, you have to call the cleaner. They have to remove and they have to change. And also, you have to change the time. These stickers must be changed every Saturday and Tuesday according to the MOH order. Replace sharp container when the sharp container is three-fourths filled and reaching, reaches the fill line. Okay. The red bags. This is you have to use transport body parts or placenta. You have to put the stuff they are putting on the red plastic and it is collected every morning. They have to collect all and put the waste room. We have uh, big refrigerators on the waste room this one, uh, we have to put the plastic every day at 6 a.m. The cleaner of the uh, delivery room and uh, uh, this one, OT theater, they are taking this waste and going to the waste room. But they have already refrigerator up on the delivery room. This ref for the placenta and body parts, they are collecting for 24 hours, but they are sending to the room once a day early morning they have to put in the refrigerator there and we are dealing with this uh, waste mrsa suspected cases there is many categories for mrsa category one category two category three category one it is the uh, if acute respiratory illness with clinical or radiological evidence of a pulmonary parchimal disease like pneumonia or acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is category one, acute respiratory illness with clinical or radiological evidence of pulmonary parchimal disease. Number two, category two, it is a hospitalized patient with a health care associated pneumonia based on clinical radiological evidence. Number three, upper or lower respiratory illness within two weeks after exposure to a confirmed or probable case of MERS-CoV. So you have three categories, so you can say this one susceptible case of MERS-CoV. Number four, for the susceptible case, unexplained acute febrile, more than or equal 38 illness, okay, with the body ache, headache, diarrhea, or nausea, vomiting. This one with or without respiratory symptoms and leukemia, the white blood cells more than 3.5 thousand and the thrombocytopenia platelets less than 150. At this time, you have to make this patient as a susceptible, susceptible case. Consider it is susceptible, so you have to deal with here and isolate to the patient. The last category, Category number five, unexplained febrile illness with uh, 
recent 14 days exposure to camels or camel uh, products. This is a susceptible case of the suspected cases of the MERS-CoV for adults. For children, it will be same, but you have to add. We have to add two points. It meets the above criteria, at least one of the following also, plus one of the following. History of exposure. The baby is exposed to confirmed or probably MERS-CoV uh, patient or uh, within 14 days prior to honest of symptoms. Number two, history of exposure to camel or camel products. Okay, so you have two meets the above criteria for adult plus one at least of the uh, this criteria, history of exposure to a confirmed or probably case or history to exposure to camel or camel products or unexplained fever or pneumonia. Probably case, it will be a patient in category one or two of suspected with uh, inconclusive laboratory result for MERS-CoV and other possible pathogen who is a close contact of a laboratory confirmed mers yani confirmed case. The patient with con close contact with the confirmed case, maybe healthcare worker, maybe a nurse, maybe a doctor, if they got any fever, with the, they are with close contact with the confirmed case, so at this time they will be probably case. And who work in a hospital where mers cases are uh, cared for, like uh, this housekeeping or technicians or nurses or doctors, they have to be probably case, had recent contact with the camel or camel products. Okay. Confirmed cases, this one confirmed by laboratory confirmation of mers infection. Okay. What we will do for these cases? We have to do isolation. If critical, you have to use the airborne contact and the standard precaution. If the case is non-critical, you have to use droplet precaution, contact precaution, and standard precaution. If you will see the standard precaution with both, if critical or non-critical, and also they are using contact precaution. Contact precaution means we have to use the BBE, the gloves, gowns. This is a contact precaution. But if critical, you have to use the airborne precaution, airborne more uh, you have to use the uh, N95 mask and you have to put the patient in the negative pressure room. But if non-critical droplet precaution, it means you can put on private room without negative pressure and you can use the surgical mask. So according to the cases, if critical or non-critical. If critical, you have to use the airborne contact precaution and standard. If non-critical case, you have to use droplet contact and standard precaution.